Thank you. Um, at the beginning of this year, I visited uh, an offshore wind park in Denmark. And what struck me um, was the difference between the first wind turbines and the new ones. So just 30 years, and um, they have become uh, four times bigger, 20 times more powerful. And uh, the fact is that today um, Europe is a global leader in this technology. And um, 30 years, this is exactly the amount of the time we have to reach our climate neutrality targets. Fortunately, my Danish experience was not the only one. Since uh, last December, I have spoken uh, to hundreds of experts and uh, stakeholders um, in the energy sector and learned about um, and visited many innovative projects. The technology and uh, solutions uh, that would get us to net zero emissions um, and doing so in a cost-effective way, they do already exist, but uh, they need to be developed um, and deployed at, the, at a larger scale. And what I also learned is uh, that being ambitious being, brings new, different uh, challenges, and you cannot build uh, the energy system of the future using the policies and uh, framework of the past. So we must rethink today's um, model or, uh, and build around rigid, um, isolated value change um, that run from an oil rig um, to conventional car or from a coal mine to a factory and doing so by wasting and polluting along all the way. And so, today, it is my pleasure to present the strategy for energy system integration that provides a new model for the energy system of the future. The strategy has three pillars. First, we can be much more efficient, circular, and consume less resources. For example, using the based heat uh, from data centers or industry um, to heat our buildings, or using also a agricultural residues to produce biogas. Second pillar is uh, that we need to massively increase the share of renewable energy um, in our energy system, and this is easiest to do through direct ele electrification, um, as the power sector is uh, far ahead of others of decarbonisation. Um, where we can go electric, we should, using renewable electricity to power of our cars and heat pumps, and buildings, for example. And third, where electrification is not possible or, is, or it is uh, just too costly. We need clean gases and fuels like hydrogen, um, also biofuel and biogas. And um, on this way, we gradually phase out natural gas. So today's strategy sets out concrete steps to achieve those three goals. All of our incoming energy in initiatives this year, the renovation wave, uh, the offshore energy strategy, and the 10 e revision will contribute. And in the coming days, we will launch the process to review the energy efficiency and renewable directives, which will help us to implement several measures outlined in this strategy. In 2021, we will propose new gas market rules to reform our gas markets uh, just as we did for our electricity markets to ensure that our legislative framework pushes uh, the gas sector to become green as fast as possible. This brings me to the second topic of the day, hydrogen. There are several CO2 heavy sectors where viable alternatives to fossil fuels do not yet exist. Some areas of transport and uh, some industry in particular Without a solution, our goal of net zero emissions will remain out of reach. The most promising answer is renewable hydrogen. Today's strategy lays out uh, our vision and concrete roadmap for the role of hydrogen in our future energy system. Uh, it is an ambitious plan, but it is achievable, uh, going from very little renewable hydrogen to 10 million tonnes by 2030. And around 13% of uh, clean hydrogen in our energy mix by 2050. To make this happen, we have to boost both supply and demand. On the, on the production side, 
We must urgently need more and bigger electrolyzers. Many are already in the work um, here in Europe. Um, this Monday, um, I was in Köln, where a consortium supported by the EU is building the world's largest PEM hydrogen elect electrolysis plant that will use only renewable electricity. But um, we need much more. And later this year, we will launch a call for a 100 megawatt electrolyzer as part of the European Green Deal call under the Horizon 2020. And we have already launched an innovation fund call, including hydrogen technologies, um, only last Friday. So to create sufficient demand for clean hydrogen, we will work on common standards, certification and terminology, and pilot a carbon contracts for difference program to facilitate the use of clean hydrogen in steel and chemical production. Quotas for specific sectors and direct market-based support schemes for renewable hydrogen may also be needed to scale up the use. We also know that um, clean hy hydrogen will have a chance only if there is a market. This means uh, that for the transitional period, we need other forms of low-carbon hydrogen to respond to the growing demand. Today, there is 9.4 million tons of fossil-based fossil -based hydrogen in our system that needs to be replaced by clean alternatives. To connect the supply and demand, we need infrastructure fit for this fuel of the future. And by the end of this year, we will revise the 10 at uh, NE or Trans-European Energy Networks regulation with hydrogen in mind. So our hydrogen strategy has also an important international dimension that Franz already mentioned. Europe has a strong position in electrolyzer production and should take advantage of the global surge in interest of, uh, in renewable hydrogen. At the same time, hydrogen provides an excellent opportunity to cooperate, especially with our neighbors in the east and south. And this will both contribute to their sustainable development and improve our security of supply. So ladies and gentlemen, if we continue with the same status quo like we had yesterday, we will reduce greenhouse gas emissions uh, by roughly 46% by 2030 and 60% uh, by 2050, and that means um, we fall short of our increased ambition for 2030 and reaching net zero by 2050 will not be feasible. So those two strategies we have adopted today are the energy sector's contribution to achieving our climate goals and recovering from the crisis. In the context of a proposed EU budget and the next generation EU recovery plan, and uh, we are sending a clear signal to the member states, industry and the world that we are determined to transform our energy sector and supporting the recovery through green investments. Thank you. Thank you very much.